All right, what's up, YouTube? Uh, Crash Wilcox Computers. We're coming uh, back again today with another build guide here. So this time it's going to be a little bit different than the previous uh, mini ITX build that we did. So the, I kind of like to label this one as going to be sort of like a brand build. I don't know if that's going to be a thing or not, but for this one, it's going to be a brand build. So the idea here is just going to kind of give a quick overview of the parts, and then we'll dig deeper into them as we start building the computer. So. This is just going to be a quick overview of what all the parts are. So I'm going to kind of go from the outside in as far as the parts are concerned. So to get things started, we're going to go right here with the case. So as you guys can see, it is Gigabyte. That's going to be the brand that we go with today. So this right here is the Gigabyte AC300W. And it's a pretty cool case. We'll kind of show off some of the neat features that it includes when we go through the build guide. But this is what we're going to start with. It's a mid-tower case. So, there we go. The next thing that we're going to look at, the motherboard. And for that, we're going to go with the Gigabyte X470 Aorus Ultra Gaming. It is a Wi-Fi enabled motherboard because I'm a big fan of having Wi-Fi. I don't use it personally, but I like having the option there, especially since I am going to be selling this. So, X470. Next thing up, and I honestly didn't even know that they made power supplies with Gigabyte, but they in fact do. So right here we have Gigabyte Aorus P750W. This is an 80 plus gold power supply. It's fully modular. 750 watts is gonna be overkill for this system. It's gonna give us more than enough power, very efficient. So that should be a really good addition to this build. Next up, we'll go with the big dog. So for this one, graphics card. We are going to go with the Aorus RTX 2060 Super. This thing is a monster of a graphics card. It's a really good looking graphics card. It has a lot of RGB, so it's going to look really nice inside of this case. Should give us a lot of great performance. So then next up, we will go with the, the RAM. So keeping it in the family of Gigabyte. We went with 32 gigabytes, four sticks of eight gigabytes a piece. Aorus RGB memory. This is uh, 3200 megahertz memory, so it should be plenty of speed, plenty of RGB. And then moving on, we got the storage. So again, sticking with the gigabyte, we got the Aorus RGB M.2 NVMe SSD. 512 gigabytes, um, like I said, it's RGB enabled, so this thing's gonna be lit up like a Christmas tree. Really nice uh, storage for our operating system, should be pretty quick. And then uh, just kind of deviating slightly for the CPU, obviously Gigabyte doesn't make CPUs, so for this build, we went with the Ryzen 7 2700X. And I know that in uh, today's world with the release of the 3700X, 3800X, the Ryzen 9, uh, the 2700X has kind of fallen out of favor, but this is still a really good CPU. I've used it in a computer before. It's great performance if you're multitasking, video editing, gaming, whatever it happens to be, eight cores, 16 threads, uh, precision boost, I mean 4.3 gigahertz. So, Plenty of speed, plenty of power. It should get the, the best performance out of this graphics card. It should be a great pairing. And as you know, this does come with a very nice CPU cooler, the Wraith Prism. Really a good looking R, uh, RGB in here. Keeps the CPU running nice and cool. But unfortunately, it's not Gigabyte, so we can't use it. So instead of the Wraith Prism, we are deciding to go with the Aorus ATC800 CPU cooler. Um, it, I'm not using it because it works any better than the Wraith Prism, just because it's Gigabyte. The RGB is going to look really good in this case, so that was our choice there. So then just to round out this build, couldn't make it 100% uh, Gigabyte, so we did have to, have to deviate slightly. So the last few things, uh, to round out the storage, this 512 Gigabytes just isn't enough in my opinion. We went with the Crucial P1 one terabyte, another M.2 SSD. 
So operating system, gaming, whatever it happens to be, you got one and a half terabytes of M.2 storage, should be very quick, uh, very good storage. And then lastly, remove the thermal tank, PCIe, basically is a riser cable, because we are going to be mounting this graphics card vertically to take advantage of those three RGB rings. So we should be able to see those in here really nicely, mount that vertically. And then lastly, um, I've used this, well not lastly, second to last, we're going to use the NTH1 thermal paste again. I've used it in all my builds so far. It's really good thermal paste, so if this cooler comes with thermal paste pre-applied, we're going to strip that off and apply the, the Noctua thermal paste instead. And then lastly, if we have to use them, we just have a couple of extra case fans that we're going to be using if need be. If we need to get some more airflow, that's what we'll be using. So that's the build. It's the Gigab Gigabyte brand build, kind of what we're uh, naming it here. So we'll dig into these parts a little bit deeper as we start putting this thing together. Um, if you guys happen to stumble across this on YouTube and you're interested in buying this because I am going to be selling it, I will have the eBay link down in the description. Uh, go ahead and hit me up. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys once we start building. So here we go. The, uh, again, Gigabyte build here. So we got the Aorus X470 Ultra Gaming. So let's get this thing open. Let's take a look at it. I'll just set this here for now. Kind of take a look at what comes in the box. Probably just going to be your standard stuff here. So. Let you guys see the back of the box. I think it's a pretty nice motherboard. And I guess I'm mistaken. I could have swore this was a Wi-Fi enabled motherboard. It is not. Um, so not going to be a big factor for me. And I'm sure most people that are serious gamers um, probably aren't gaming on Wi-Fi anyway. All right, so we got the motherboard out now. We took a look at that. So we're going to go ahead and get the RAM installed. And then we'll go ahead and get the M.2 hard drives installed. So again, right here, the Gigabyte Aorus RGB memory. We got uh, four sticks of eight gigabytes for 32 gigabytes total, 3,200 megahertz. So okay, so it looks like in each package they give you the two actual RAM sticks and then you get just two additional looks like just RGB sticks essentially to fill out your your slots there so you don't have anything missed so that's pretty sweet um, I mean it costs damn near enough so they should have put that in there but that's pretty nice so obviously I went with 32 not just to fill up the motherboard but also it sort of future proofs um, this PC, if you do decide to buy it from me, you're going to be good for, you know, the next couple of years with, you know, all the products that are going to be in here. Um, and especially 32 gigabytes of RAM is going to be a bit of overkill today. But going forward. M.2. So we'll go ahead and insert the first one. We're going to go with that one terabyte. You always go ahead and take that film off. And we'll get this opened up. And I have linked videos before as far as, you know, what type of M.2s to get and stuff like that. You know, I've talked about it before. Samsung, I get it, is the king of the hill when it comes to M.2, but you can get good value, you know, and good performance without spending that Samsung money. So that's why we decided to go with this.
All right, so we got the Crucial P1 in. To follow that up, we're gonna go ahead and get our Gigabyte Aorus RGB M.2, pretty fancy packaging. All right, so we get, again, got it installed, the two M.2s. So we're gonna go ahead and get our CPU installed, our Ryzen 7 2700X. Now I will be honest, of all the things I said I will send you all the boxes and all the parts, the Wraith Prism Cooler will not be included in that. This is gonna stay with me for probably a future build. So unless you desperately want it, let me know. Uh, maybe we can work out something, but we will just show this off. That's taped on there, but um, this is a very nice CPU cooler. Like I said, we're not using it because it doesn't work well enough. We're simply going with the Gigabyte brand, but this is a really good cooler. It looks really good. So I encourage you, if you think you would like it, let me know. Be happy to part with it in that situation, but otherwise I'm gonna hold on to it and use it in a future build because it's just too good to not use. So we will deal with that later. But this is, uh, this is what we care about right here. The Ryzen 7, awesome CPU. Awesome value for the money, especially today where the prices have gone down since the release of the 37 and 3800X, 3900X. But this is still nothing to sneeze at. And nice little decal, I'm a fan. So just like with the other CPUs, this Intel, same thing. You're gonna line the arrows up together. So we got the arrow right here. We're gonna line that up right here. You don't wanna push these things down too hard. You just wanna let them just sort of rest in there and you'll feel it when it drops in. And then go ahead and cinch that back. Got a box of parts there. Oh man. That thing is a freaking behemoth. Holy smokes. Look at that. That thing is gonna be running nice. All right, so there we go. I'm assuming these are just gonna be our mount, mounting brackets. So you got everything for Intel, you got your AMD. Um, nice thing, it actually comes with a pretty decent size tube of thermal paste here. Again, we're not gonna use that. Um, I will include it, like I said, if you guys decide to buy this from me, I'll keep that in there. Um, man, that thing is gonna look good when it is lit up. But like I said, we're gonna go ahead and use the NTH1 thermal paste. It's worked good for me in the past. I'm gonna stick with it as long as I can. All right, so for this, looks like we're gonna to have to take the uh, pre-installed clips off. All right, so we got the brackets installed. I uh, feel like I'm missing some pieces, so let's look back in here. Here we go.
All right, so we got the brackets installed. I uh, feel like I'm missing some pieces, so let's look back in here. Here we go. Unfortunately, I think we're going to have to remove our RAM to get this tightened down in there. But we'll take a look. Although I'm pretty certain. Give it a little tighten, make sure it's on there. We don't gotta crank it down too hard. All right. So from what I gather, this nice little included tool is what we are going to use to tighten this down. So you're essentially going to be, you know, using this to tighten these down because you can't get the screws in there. So we're just, we're going to have to remove. Yeah. All right. That's fine. All right, so we're gonna see how that works. Uh, we'll see how that fits in the case. See if we gotta do anything different with the cable wiring. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this RAM back in. And then we're gonna get our case up here. So I didn't talk about this a ton before but this case is pretty neat so the first thing on here if you look at the IO uh, panel up here you got an HDMI port right up here on the front and a USB type C which is pretty sweet I guess this HDMI is supposed to make it easier for uh, VR if you happen to VR at all you can just plug it in right here you got your LED light switch power switch and then two USBs um, got your you know, just magnetic dust filter, which you can pull off. And then we will lay this thing down. This right here is cool too. Your dust filter on the front just pulls out so you can get that taken care of.
All right, so we got the motherboard installed. Everything seems to fit all right. This case does come with two fans, 220 millimeter fans. So I think we are gonna go ahead and insert two of our additional fans. Um, I'm probably gonna slide this one up maybe to here and get the other one up here to get that airflow. We'll go ahead and get the, the uh, power supply put in there first, then go ahead and get all the cable management stuff put up in here before we go ahead and put the graphics card in last. So let's get that power supply out. All right, so here we go. We got the Aorus P750, 80 plus gold, fully modular power supply. Let me just give you guys a quick look at the box if you care to see it. If you really care to see it, go ahead and buy this from me and uh, I will send you the box. So, Please feel free if you guys are watching this and you've made it this far. If you got any tips, advice, anything you care to ask a build you'd like to see, go ahead and leave that in the comments um, down below. I'd love to get a chance to talk to anybody that's actually seen one of my videos. Um, so let's get this thing opened up here. Right here, got a nice little baggie full of cables. Nothing fancy, just flat black cables. All right, so there it is. That fully modular, and I do believe this has a uh, I don't know what the feature they call it, but essentially, if it gets down to less than like a 20% pull on the battery, it'll shut the fan down, um, you know, to kind of conserve some of that energy. But that's the power supply, so we're going to go ahead and get this thing thrown in. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just slide this power supply in here. Didn't show you guys, but it does have a nice little dust filter down here. Make sure you don't get anything in that fan. All right, so there we go. Got the power supply installed. Everything's good to go. Looking good back here. So now we are going to. Like I said, get the rest of this cable management, or not cable management necessarily, but the cables hooked up so that we can get this thing ready for the graphics card and then get her closed up and powered on. All right, so we got all the cables hooked up for the most part. Um, I'll clean up the cable management once we sort of get everything put together and make sure that it actually turns on. And then we'll go ahead and kind of tighten everything up and tie everything out. But for now, everything is hooked up, and we're going to go ahead and get our PCI riser cable installed. So let's set that off to the side real quick. Since I've never put one in before, I'm going to go ahead and get the graphics card out first. So, Gigabyte Aorus, or I'm sorry, Gigabyte, yeah, Aorus RTX 2060 Super. This thing is pretty nice. I had bought this previously for a different build and it was just too big to fit in there. So we decided to save it and that's what, that's what kind of sparked the whole Gigabyte uh, brand build. So here we go, just real nice kind of, hey, thanks for uh, buying our stuff. There's that. And then, yep, just a little emblem right there. And this is not a true first time unboxing. I did have this thing open, that's how I knew that it didn't fit in the other build. 
but that's all right. Look at that baby. This thing should look pretty nice standing up straight like so. That is going to be the plan. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out how this whole PCI riser fits in here and then we'll get it hooked up and let you guys see what it looks like. All right, so a bit disappointing. Uh, we are not gonna be able to mount this thing vertically. It is just simply too big to fit in here. So, I mean, <laughs> kind of a little bit disappointing. This is the second case now that I've wanted to mount this thing vertically and it just won't fit. So if you see this and you're, you could comment in the comment section, if you've ever seen this thing actually mounted vertically in something, I don't know if you're building a computer in the trunk of a Chevy Suburban, then maybe this thing would, you know, mount vertically, but it is, it's just a beast. So that's all right. It's still going to look good. Um, so we're going to have to just mount normally. It's actually maybe even better this way. Now we're going to actually get to see the M.2 down here. We should be able to see the RGB on the Gigabyte logo down there and then we will go ahead and get the rest of this installed. Eight plus six gets that connected. So that should be everything. All right, so I'm gonna go and grab uh, the an extension cord, get the power cable hooked up and make sure that this thing turns on. All right, so here we go. We got it. It's all completed. The Gigabyte Gaming PC. Oh, there I am in that glare.